This is, this is quite common with AGM batteries and also flooded batteries, but everybody's left their lights on, everybody's left the dome light on. Cars today, even if you don't leave the lights on, they consume a lot of electricity, keeping things running, alarm systems, computers, and so on. So vehicles, if you, if you store them for long periods, they could deeply discharge a battery on their own. Most of the batteries that we get back as thought to be bad batteries are actually good. They just need to be recharged. So if you haven't noticed, um, we're not using the newest, prettiest Optima battery we have to show this demonstration. This battery is actually 19 years old. Um, it's been through the ringer. It looks a little bit different than current Optima batteries, but, but exactly the same technology. You've got a deeply discharged Optima battery that's um, been frustrating and difficult to recharge. Um, most people can find another uh, good battery with 12 volts or more in it. So these are the two things that you, you, you've got your problem, problem battery, you've got your regular automotive battery that you either borrowed from a friend or took out from, a, from another car. And it could be an Optima, by the way, as long as it's got 12 volts. And a standard charger. I took this out of our collection of chargers over here, but this is the one that um, is, is very common and has a 10 amp setting. So it's very important that you try to keep it around a 10 amp setting. The procedure doesn't really work that well with trickle chargers or high amperage boosting chargers. So first thing we want to do is we've, we've got this battery that won't start your vehicle, doesn't operate well with your standard charger by itself, and you're frustrated. First thing to do is check the voltage. Oh, there we go. So as we can see, this battery has less than eight volts. Now make sure to check the voltage on your standard battery or your other Optima battery. You want to make sure again that this battery has at least 12 volts. This one has 13, so it's definitely got a solid charge in it. What happens is, and you may have noticed this when you've tried to recharge the deeply discharged Optima, but typically the battery charger won't come on. The reason why we're using a good battery uh, along with the deeply discharged Optima batteries is because we're going to wire these two batteries together to trick this charger into thinking that it's got a good battery to recharge. So after we tried to hook this battery charger up to the Optima battery before, it wouldn't even turn on. Okay, it's got a safety feature built into it where typically anything less than 10 and a half volts is going to be a big struggle for any battery charger, unless it's AGM specific, but traditional battery charger, it's going to be very difficult for that battery or that charger to come back on. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to trick the charger. Let's hook up the jumper cables. Negative to negative. So we're hooking this up in parallel. And then positive to positive. So now what we've done here is we've created two batteries in parallel. And basically what that does is it makes, as far as the charger is concerned, one battery. And as, as we hook this charger up, it's going to read the two batteries as one, but see the highest voltage. So what it's going to do is it's going to turn on. All of the amperage is going to go into the Optima battery that's deeply discharged. So it doesn't matter if you hook the charger up now to either battery, because again, it sees it as one battery. We should see the charger come on. And it is on. So now we've got everything set up. Our batteries are hooked up in parallel. We've got our battery charger hooked up. We can see that it's accepting a charge. What we want to do is come back in an hour uh, and check the voltage of the Optima battery and make sure that it's at least 10 and a half volts. If it's not, then we may want to let it sit for a little bit longer because it is pretty discharged. However, if it's 10 and a half or above, then we're going to come back, take the jumper cables off, and charge the Optima on its own. So I'll see you in an hour. Hi, we're back. It's been an hour, and what we want to do now is check the Optima battery and see if it's above 10 and a half volts. 
It's a good idea at this time too that you also check the, um, the battery and make sure that it's not getting super hot. If it's getting real hot, it's probably got a short in it. Warm is okay. So if you can put your hands on the sides of the cases, touch all the cells, and if you can feel that either it's getting a little bit warm or it's still cool to the touch, that's fine. If it's getting real hot, stop this process, disconnect them. You've got a bad battery most likely. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect these now and, and see what the, uh, what the voltage is. Oh, that's pretty good. 11.67. That's about where it's resting right now. So plenty of voltage to now hook up the battery charger on its own. Once again, we can see that the charge is coming on. So now, since it's an automatic battery charger, we're going to let that charge on its own. And once it's fully charged, that automatic battery charger will shut off. So typically, um, you know, at around the voltage that we just checked, it'll probably take overnight to charge the battery. So pull up another deeply discharged Optima battery. This one's probably a little bit more familiar because this is the uh, style that we build today. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, get one of our newer AGM specific battery chargers or a battery charger that has AGM capability and we're going to recharge this battery using that. So the first thing we want to do is check the voltage on this battery. As you can see it's got 5.44 volts. This battery will not recharge with a conventional battery charger. One of the chargers I like to use is a combination charger maintainer but the neat thing about this battery charger is it also has what's called uh, desulfation mode. As you can see here, it's turned on. It's automatically gone to a reconditioning mode. This Internally, this charger here has sensed that this battery needs reconditioning, and it's also showing the state of charge. So it's showing that it's obviously uh, deeply discharged. That light on there says it's being reconditioned. All right, so this charger's been on for about five hours and it's maybe not fully charged yet. Actually, the charger says it's not fully charged, but it should have enough charge in it just so that we could show you that it's got over 12 volts and that's gonna eventually be a good battery. And there she is, 12.36 volt. So this battery's gonna be just fine. Should be up to about 12.6, 12.7 when you put it back in your car, but it's well on its way. However, if you choose not to invest in an AGM specific battery charger, you don't have one, or you choose not to fool around with taking a battery out of your other car and hooking up the jumper cables. You may not have a traditional battery charger, bolt meter. If you choose not to hassle with it, there's a tremendous amount of battery specialists out there that can perform this service for you. They know what's going on. They're battery experts. So um, we'll be happy to refer you to one if you'd like to call our toll-free consumer service line. So, there's three tips for recovering deeply discharged batteries. First one is the parallel setup. Second one is AGM battery specific charger with um, recovery mode. And the third one is take it to a battery specialist. So, I um, hope you can choose one.